What goes on inside the animal research lab that's just been opened in Oxford? It's one of the most controversial buildings of modern times. The original contractors pulled out after they said their staff had been threatened and intimidated by animal rights extremists. The government stepped in with financial backing and a campaign began in support of animal experiments. Our medical correspondent, Fergus Walsh, has been given exclusive and unfettered access to the new building. It's still surrounded by anonymous wooden hoardings topped with barbed wire, but the four-storey Oxford Animal Laboratory in the heart of the city is now officially open for research. It will bring together animals currently housed in half a dozen units in Oxford. Inside, I put on zip-up overalls, plastic shoe covers and a hat to prevent germs coming in to what is now the biggest single university animal lab in the UK. I'm looking at some of the first animals to be transferred over to this new building, some white mice. Now, these mice are part of a research programme looking into Alzheimer's. And over here, another rack of cages are some brown mice which are part of a research program into diabetes. I'm wearing a protective suit with covers on my shoes and a hat on my head, the sort of hygiene controls that are far stricter than any hospital ward. There are vets on hand 24-7 to treat sick animals. In the new university veterinary lab, staff are still unwrapping their equipment like microscopes. Animal welfare will be improved in the new building because we can provide a much, much more efficient service. Instead of running around between different buildings around the science area, it will all be concentrated in one building. Sarah Wolfenson, head of veterinary services, says the new building will be better for the animals, for science and ultimately for patients. Animals are necessary uh, in research because not only to develop treatments for disease but also to understand disease so that we can find some prevention methods. And if veterinary services can do their bit by helping the animal welfare and ensuring that we understand disease and prevent it then that's good for humans and animals and it's good to be able to contribute to that. Oxford University says 98% of the animals in the new building will be rodents. There'll also be fish and ferrets. One entire floor though is given over to primate research. The steel cages are ready, but the university's hundred or so macaque monkeys have yet to be transferred to the new facility. They'll be housed together in groups of around 12 to 16, in rooms with climbing frames, tyres and windows. The monkeys will have more space and, for the first time, some access to natural daylight. There are two operating theatres. Many of the macaques will have surgery to create brain lesions, brain damage, to study how this affects their memory and understanding, research into conditions like Parkinson's and motor neuron disease. Many endure the deliberate infliction of brain damage in a crude attempt to mimic the effects of conditions such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Such procedures inflict much suffering and yet have very little scientific value due to the important physiological differences between artificial models and real human diseases. The surgery on the monkeys involved placing them under anaesthetic, sawing open their skulls, cutting and scraping away the muscle and then deliberately damaging an area of the brain by either sucking out sections, cutting or injecting toxins. This marmoset has been brain damaged in an attempt to mimic the effects of a stroke in humans. To administer test drugs, pumps were also surgically inserted and removed up to three times for each monkey. The marmoset's behaviour was then measured using series of tests, including this one, where the monkey has to react to an array of choices to find the reward for food. This marmoset is rotating because its brain has been damaged with a toxin to simulate the effect of Parkinson's disease. But it's not an accurate comparison. Patients with Parkinson's disease do not rotate. In humans, the onset of the disease is gradual, with no spontaneous recovery. But with these monkeys, there is an instant impact of the toxin, followed by partial recovery. The research included placing the monkeys in small perspex boxes, 
injecting them with amphetamine and apomorphine to make them rotate faster and then counting how many times they go around. Soon the monkey was seriously distressed. Professor Alistair Buchan is a stroke specialist and the head of the Medical Sciences Division at Oxford. He says the new building will do crucial research into a whole range of diseases. Without the observations in animals, we would not have started in humans and there would be no treatment for stroke. That, that comes out of research using models where there's blood vessels, and there's brain tissue that's pretty close to what we have. Um, I can't think of any way that you can do that in a culture. You can't make a head injury in a dish. You can't create a stroke in a test tube. You, you cannot create a heart attack on a chip. It just doesn't work. But research on primates is highly controversial and has vocal opponents. Under the terms of a court injunction, the animal rights group Speak is allowed one protest per week outside the building. Amanda Richards says animal experiments are immoral and scientifically worthless. Our intentions are to continue campaigning, as we've been doing for the last four years, to highlight the fact that this university is torturing animals to death and to try and persuade the university to change this from an animal torture lab to a, a lab which is looking at the alternatives and the cutting edge research which is really going to be driving medicine and scientific thinking forward. As well as the legal protests, the police point to incidents of arson and intimidation. Four years ago, Cambridge University cancelled plans for its own primate research facility because of fears over animal rights extremism. Months later, work stopped at Oxford when the contractors pulled out. The government stepped in to underwrite the security costs. So the opening of this lab now is a significant moment for Oxford and for the hundreds of scientists and medical charities who've said animal research is essential. But for opponents, it will remain the focus of protest long after the last animals have moved in. Fergus Walsh reporting.